and welcome to About Face Theatre presents Five Questions With, and today's guest, Kristen Hange. Kristen is a theatre director whose credits include the multi-award winning pop opera Bear, the uh, off-Broadway uh, musical version of Clueless, and the smash hit Broadway musical Rock of Ages, for which she received a Tony nomination. She's also a film director whose films include Grantham and Rose and Naomi and Eli's No Kiss List, and she's also a writer, a creative guide, and co-host of the podcast, Let's Play, the Create podcast. Kristen, you're very welcome. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you. Um, so we're going to dive right in. Uh, so your first question is just, uh, what play or experience first got you into theater? Oh, well, I think... <laughs> play first got me into theater. <laughs> oh, um, I love it. <laughs> the desire as a little kid just to play make-believe uh, mm. was overwhelming as a little girl. And I would always make my little brother learn songs and put on skits with me. And I think I used to watch the musicals, like the movie musicals, mm. uh, probably Sound of Music and West Side Story were the mm. two fundamental movie musicals that I would watch as a little girl at home and then have to recreate them in my living room. So <laughs> if I have to give credit, then I'll give credit there. I think when I knew I wanted to be a director though, is when I saw uh, Phantom of the Opera. It was the touring company that was coming through mm. Southern California. And I remember watching the beautiful stagecraft of that. I think I even left my family during the performance to, and snuck up and got a seat by myself, like at intermission so I could be up closer. I was like, oh, there's an empty seat up there. <laughs> As I'm going up. And I think I must have been uh, in junior high seeing it. And it was the magic of the stagecraft that made me go, oh, I want to do that. I want to create magic for people. Mm. Love it, love it, love it, love it. That's great. So um, obviously then we're talking about Phantom of Opera being a big influence on you, but Kristen, what would be a great play or, or musical that you love and why? Oh, Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Oh, um, nice. I love it so much. First of all, I think Stephen Trask's songs are incredible. They're mm. so deep, they're so tuneful. He's a brilliant songwriter and philosopher. And I also love what John Cameron Mitchell did in terms of the convention of theater. Mm. I like how that musical is gritty, it's real, it's mm. also celebratory. I love how it takes, you know, it looks at Iggy Pop and David Bowie and it plays with this, uh, what icons do for us and how mm. icons help us to transcend. Mm. I think that that, uh, that, it's just such a, it's so well told and there's something simple about it and also very lofty at the same time. Mm. Mm. That's love great. It. Yeah, you know, I love that. Gritty and lofty at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a pretty good combination. It, it breaks conventions too. It's put, yeah. it, for me, it pushed the conversation of musical theater forward. And mm. so I think I'm always interested in like, okay, what, What's pushing the conversation forward? Mm. Love it, love That's it. Great. So, in your in your theater life, um, ha, you know, tell us about a time when uh, maybe things turned out differently than you expected them to. Uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is about the nature of creating. I think everything I ever do always turns out differently, and that's part of the magic of co-creation. Mm. I think. Mm. Whenever you you set out to create anything, you have this vision that pulls you, and it's really exciting. And thank goodness it gives you energy and motivation, and it, it gives you a direction to point and move towards. And of course, then there's everything else that happens along the way: the the stumbles, the obstacles. Sometimes they feel insurmountable, mm -hmm. and th that's actually part of the good stuff too. So what mm. I've learned in my career is not to try to push those obstacles away or think I'm on the wrong road because look at this enormous <laughs> unbeatable obstacle, mm. but go, oh, there must be something good here in this crazy <laughs> obstacle. So I was just telling the story the other day of how uh, one of our first productions of Rock of Ages out in Los Angeles, um, I believe it was our prop master was high on cocaine and crashed our prop truck. Like I was, I was like, oh, and that was like emblematic 
of that initial production of Rock of Ages, everything <laughs> that could go wrong did. I think one of my dancers had to go to the emergency room. I, I mean, there were so many things that we were performing at a club and the owner of that club threatened my producers, I think with a gun, like, I mean, <laughs> just ridiculous things that happened. <laughs> The, the, the building itself kept losing power. And so then all of, all of our lighting and sound cues would just disappear. So can you imagine like hecking a show with like 500 cues and then being like, um, well, we, we, we have some of the work, but some of it's not. <laughs> like, do you know? So I mean, so these things happened. And uh, I remember during the time I was reading Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. It was before like Oprah had made it uh, famous. I literally was just like, I, I swear to good, this is a true story. I was in rehearsals and I was like, I feel like I have an issue. I have a problem with my ego. Like my ego needs to be in check. And I went to the bookstore and I found Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth and I had never heard of him before. And I remember being, uh, directing that production and really working on being present and being like, no matter <laughs> what happens, can I be in this present moment? And I remember it feeling like the most intense, uh, intense strength training of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, theater's good for that. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. Oh, woo, I'm getting so expansive. <laughs> I'm handling so many hurdles. I mean, you guys must know having your own theater company. Woo. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. it's it's always. I think bringing a show together, whether you're producing, directing, it's like it's it's always so much. And I think we always kind of like almost like the rule is for us is that we have to love the play mm -hmm. because ninety percent of the work of putting it together is the grunt work and the tough work and the messy work. But it's always worth it on those tough days. Mm -hmm. when you kind of go, ah, oh, but I love the play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. worth it because you love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's always a growth experience, like you you said, like every everything is an opportunity for growth i think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so kristen um you obviously have an amazing theater career but you've also um branched out into directing film and television and writing and uh, lots of different paths um but what is it about theater that makes you come back to theater what what moves you excites you about it community mm -hmm. i love the communal process of theater first of all i love being with a group of artists and putting together a show like i just don't think there's anything more fun than having <laughs> actors and writers and designers and musicians and all of us hanging out and figuring out how to put together a show mm -hmm. i would love to do it in an environment where there is less pressure i mean the great thing about being a commercial director is you get to do it with really wonderful resources and with really talented people, but the pressure of commercial theater is really intense as well. So sometimes it can be a practice to stay playful, curious, investigative while you're also um, having to fit within limits of time and space and sometimes people right behind you that really want you to do a good job and you have to kind of really stay focused on the work and not the expectations. Mm. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I feel yeah. like, but what keeps me coming back to theater is uh, people mm -hmm. and because, and it's also for people. So I love as a director being in an audience and feeling your audience. So you can feel when an audience is having a great time and in the same way you can feel when an audience is lost and confused and they are annoyed with you. And I just love the honesty of it all. <laughs> and, um, and I love that an audience will, like especially developing a new show, a new play or a musical, if you listen to the audience, they'll tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And so I really think of myself as a sculptor of new plays and musicals, because what I'm trying to do is really attune to the information they're giving me so that I can have a deeper conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's lovely, I love mm -hmm. that a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so you've already mentioned, you know, like dealing with limitations and you, and even about ego and things like that, but what, what skills would you say from theater, um, you know, what theater skills have you learned that you find applicable or useful in, in the rest of your life? Well, I would say for theater and film and television, uh, how to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. So 
it takes a lot of empathy. It takes a lot of understanding. It takes a lot of uh, communication abilities. Different people communicate in different ways. Uh, mm. It's interesting when you're directing for television because you're often walking into a group of people and inheriting a set of dynamics. So it's like mm. you're walking into a family and <laughs> you don't know what the relationships are and you have to learn them very quickly. And, uh, and so everything is about how to, um, I help guide this group of people to work together yeah. for an intended aim. And I think it, that's just really helpful in terms mm -hmm. of life. And yeah. I, one of the things that I love about being a director is every time I'm put on a project, it's new people. It, and new people means different kinds of gifts, different mm -hmm. kinds of wisdom and different kinds of trauma. And you never get the trauma without the wisdom, right? They're both, they're hand in hand. So here you come, all these beautiful gifts and all this beautiful trauma, right? And, 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 and can I embrace it all and say, yes, all of this is here and let's include it all. Yes, all of this is part of it. And I think, we, especially now, we can't pretend that we don't bring all of that with us. And it is there in every conversation, right? So especially with artists, we're so sensitive we're also very generous, but those places, not only do they come up, but they end up in the art. So mm -hmm. can we, I almost want to say, can we invite that process of, um, instead of trying to like push down, say I'm working with a collaborator who is really betrayed on their last collaboration. Mm -hmm. So they come in and, and they're just guarded and scared. And uh, can I make room for that and say, mm -hmm. that's okay, I'll, all of that's welcome. It's here. Mm -hmm. We need to talk it out. Let's talk it out. I think it's important to remember that we're all human in this process. And we, and you know, I think corporate America is learning that as well. Like you can't take the human out of humanity. So <laughs> it's like, here it is. And if we're making art, which is to communicate with the human soul, we have to allow our souls to be available and open and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and confused, it's okay. We're not supposed to know the way to somewhere we've never been, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna look to each other and say, what feels right to you? And sometimes we're gonna get it right and sometimes we're gonna get it wrong and it's all okay. So mm -hmm. I feel like being a director teaches me how to be a human and vice versa. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. Beautiful, I love thank that. you. Well, that's, that's so, so wonderful, Kristen. That's really brilliant. So just as a bonus question after all that, <laughs> What are among your many, many facets? What are you working on at the moment? Oh my gosh. Well, there's something that's so exciting that I can't wait to announce. Wait, you guys, there are three things that are so exciting <laughs> that I can't wait to announce, but I can't until like the paperwork's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I am, I, I someone is giving me the opportunity to do like my dream Kristen project. Which <laughs> I am, I will totally come back and talk to you guys about yeah. because literally like, if you could ask me what is the thing that would excite me the most and terrify me the most, it's this thing. Oh. So yeah, so I'm really stoked about that. And, um, and, and, and then there's something else uh, that I'm getting the opportunity, a story that I care about uh, deeply to share wow. at some really high levels. So I think, you know, I believe the job is always just to get quiet and listen and ask I want to say the universe, but use whatever you want there. You can also mm -hmm. say, ask your own soul, you know, mm -hmm. what is the next thing you want me to create and mm -hmm. listen to that and show up and do that. I, it's, that's actually something I learned from Rob Bell, who's one of my favorite teachers. Mm -hmm. But when I let my life get that simple, what mm -hmm. is the next thing that you want me to create and just show up for that? Then, and also I feel like, um, my life uh, feels a little bit more smooth when it feels like I'm not avoiding the thing my soul wants me to create. Mm. True, very true. Yeah, mm. yeah, I can feel that, that resonance. Well, Kristen, thank you so, so much for being with us and for sharing, sharing your experiences with us. It's been so, um, so wonderful. You always, it all, you always feel my soul just to, just to even see you when I, even though I can't touch you on the screen. Well, my soul. well I so. just love you guys. And as soon as this pandemic's over, I'm going to find a way to come over because I've never been to Ireland. It is on my list of like the next place I must go. So I'm just going to, I'm the Good. moment I can, I'm coming. 
Excellent, excellent. Absolutely. Yeah, you're Great always time. welcome. And, and we've recorded that, so, yeah. so, so we're going to hold you to it. I would love it. Okay. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to everyone who for watching. Thank you for joining us. And we very much look forward to seeing you next time on About Face Theatre Presents Five Questions With. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and share. Thanks for watching.